recently, actor Dave Coulier from Full House, he revealed that he has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, he said um, he received this diagnosis after going in for an upper respiratory infection and it resulted in a severe swelling of his lymph nodes. Could this have been avoided if it was treated earlier? Probably not. Yeah, we don't think of lymphoma as a, a cancer that um, screening uh, is effective for the way you know, we know that mammograms and colonoscopies can detect cancer earlier. Uh, for lymphoma, uh, for the most part, um, if it's identified or diagnosed, it, there's not um, a proven uh, screening strategy that could have uh, prevented it from happening. Right. What is the screening process like? How would one, you know, how is one diagnosed for this? It's, is it usually somebody does come in for something like that, like a chest infection or enlarged lymph nodes? What are kind of the symptoms maybe yeah, to look out so for? The, the common presentation for non-Hodgkin lymphoma might be enlarged lymph nodes in the neck or in the armpits or groin area. Sometimes other symptoms like bloating uh, and what we call systemic symptoms, uh, unintentional weight loss, severe fatigue, or drenching night sweats. So not just feeling a little hot under the covers at night, but more uh, like really drenching to the point of needing to change your sort of night, your sheets or your night clothes. Those are some of the symptoms that people can present with at the initial time of diagnosis for non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Interesting. You know, he said that one of the areas grew to a size of a golf ball, he underwent the CT scans for the biopsy, was told it was B-cell, like you mentioned before, mm -hmm. and very aggressive. So can you okay. tell us a little bit more about okay. what that means? Okay, yeah. So with that information, what I would say is for an aggressive B-cell lymphoma, uh, the most common one would be a diagnosis of something called diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, although I don't know specifically if that's what he had. Uh, that would be statistically the most common diagnosis. This is actually curable, if that's the diagnosis, uh, in the sense that treatments, which are typically medications, chemotherapy drugs that give go throughout the body, can eliminate, uh, in many cases, all of the lymphoma in the body. Uh, that doesn't always happen. And if it doesn't happen with the first try, there are still other treatments that can be uh, effective in subsequent lines of therapy as well. Yeah, you, you know, you said that he it, he said that he was given a ninety percent range of recovering rate um, after his bone marrow test came back um, negative, and so mm -hmm. that sounds about right then. Yeah, yeah, that's consistent with the type of more favorable outcomes that we typically see with the most common aggressive B cell non Hodgkin lymphoma. So, so that's a normal sur survival rate for this about. Well, 90%, again, I, without knowing the exact diagnosis, it's a, and a little hard to comment with high, you know, high certainty, but um, there certainly are scenarios in which we do tell patients with aggressive B-cell non-Hodgkin lymphoma that they have a 90% cure rate. Uh, that wouldn't be the total cure rate for this diagnosis. It would probably be more in the sort of 70 to 80% range on average. But within that average, there are people who have more favorable and unfavorable features that could sort of have influenced uh, that determination. Sure, yeah. He said that possibly he's gone underground, undergone one round of chemo so far, has had three surgeries, and said he could be in total remission by February. Okay. After he completes all this, what and if he is in remission, what what are the steps from there? Does he get monthly checkups? What what's the next step? Yeah, yeah. So for a sort of um, standard course of therapy for aggressive uh, B cell non Hodgkin lymphoma may take five or six months of uh, what we call rounds or cycles of of chemotherapy medications. Those do have side effects, as you might imagine. It can sometimes, depending, you know, can cause hair loss. Uh, which typically grows back, but um, there can be other side effects like fatigue, so, uh, sometimes increased risk of infection. But for you know a young person like him who's otherwise presumably healthy, um, those side effects are typically manageable. And then to answer the question at the end, if he's in a complete remission, we would anticipate a full recovery. There will be what we call surveillance checkups with labs, physical exams, and scans subsequently. Uh, but the most, the majority of people who do get a complete remission uh, typically will stay that way uh, 
for, uh, again, depending on the diagnosis, can be for the rest of their life, they may stay in remission.